And joining the table, we have author and NBC News contributor Anand Giridardis. And in Washington, contributing writer for the New York Times, New York Times Magazine, that is, Robert Draper. His cover story in the magazine's upcoming issue focuses on Bill Clinton's 1980 defeat for re-election in Arkansas and how it helped define the Hillary Clinton who we see today. Robert writes in part this, she's been a presence in American public life for more than a third of a century, and yet for all her ubiquity, she remains a curiously unknown quantity to many voters. It's possible to glimpse the origins of this paradox in the time between Bill Clinton's 1980 loss for re-election as Arkansas governor and his 1982 victory upon facing the electoral judgment of her persona for the first time, Hillary Rodham Clinton began what has gradually evolved into a precarious shadow game with the American public, a ritualized series of reveals, retreats, and resets, each, each iteration seemingly more freighted with recrimination and self-doubt than the one preceding it. It was the moment when Hillary became Hillary, a collaborative creation by herself and her political enemies, both a reflection and a source of the uncertainty and mistrust with which the public has so often regarded her. That is loaded. Yeah, that is loaded. Robert, obviously, for people that don't know, 1978, uh, Bill Clinton as AG elected governor, uh, serves two years, only two-year terms there, uh, is swept out with the uh, Reagan revolution in 1980 and Bill Clinton scra uh, scraps his way back uh, to winning again uh, from 82 I guess all the way through 92 mm. uh, we've learned about we've heard about the lessons that Bill Clinton learned sounds like Hillary's lessons though were fairly negative ones about her own interactions with the people uh, sure ex explain yeah, well, a casualty of the 1980 race was the unvarnished version of Hillary Rodham, uh, and that's the name, of course, she went by. I, I met with a woman named Gay White, who is the widow of Frank White, who succeeded, who beat uh, Bill Clinton in the 1980 gubernatorial election. Frank White mm -hmm. was a, an unknown Little Rock banker. I think 2% of Arkansans knew who he was, but he sensed a vulnerability. You're right that the Reagan revolution certainly aided and abetted that. But as he and his wife, Gay uh, White, traveled around, um, particularly rural Arkansas, what they heard over and over uh, were people coming up to them saying to Gay White, uh, if you, um, uh, if your husband's elected, are you going to, uh, are you going to change your last name? Are you going to, you going to stay Gay White? And, and what was clear was that they had a real um, wariness towards the first lady of Arkansas, who at that point in time was unvarnished was uh, uh, a 32-year-old um, full partner at the Rose Law Firm, uh, was also raising her child, but privately, not as a political prop. Uh, and uh, they registered their dissatisfaction at the polls uh, on a lot of levels, but Hillary Clinton was one of them. She was, in a lot of ways, as Gay White put it, an undercurrent. Uh, Hillary Clinton learned from that um, situation. By 1982, her name was now Hillary Clinton. Uh, she had a new wardrobe, she had new makeup, but most of all what she had was um, a, the first layer of protective armor as she sought uh, a kind of cosmetically reassuring version of herself, uh, mm -hmm. but in so doing, um, uh, began to place distance between her and electorate. And so the distrust that we see is a mutual one between the voters and her. Anand, do you agree? I think what's so interesting is you, you think about she's running against a, a <clears throat> self-proclaimed genital grabber um, who may be on track to losing but is still getting a third in the most negative scenario of a, of a vast and decent country. Right. And I think the only way to explain that is that kind of reticence that, that Robert's explaining and the, and the history behind it. But the idea that even in those moments when it's so easy to deliver that knockout, I think there's a fear of the press and of, uh, and of how she is seen that prevents her from just viscerally I, I, I hate to keep bringing this I mean, up. I hate yeah. to keep bringing this up, but you know, I'm we sorry, Bill Clinton the <laughs> and the way he allegedly treated women for decades, 
always has to come back up because if you say a self-proclaimed genital grabber when you're talking about Donald Trump, but it's not her fault, you, right? That no, Bill Clinton no, did these things. No, it's it's not her fault. But at the same time, she and the Democratic establishment. Actually, what I was going to say was there were so many people in 1992 Republicans that sounded just like you. How in the world could a World War II hero? A humble man like George H. W. Bush lose to a vulgarian, to a to a, a an alleged sexual abuser, to a draft dodger, to someone who has coarsened American politics by his very existence. I think it's absolutely. I, I think it's absolutely I, I fascinating I that the think same we can thing compare. that oh we can. I, I, oh, we I, can. I don't think we can compare oh my Trump God. to any figure really? who has run in, at that level and said have the you kinds seen, of things Have you seen Lisa has. Meyer's interview with Juanita Broderick on Dateline? What? This was Donald Trump himself declaring this. This was not have allegedly. You, have you read Maureen Dowd's columns on Hillary Clinton's roles in enabling her I husband's have. behavior? I have. So but this I was the principal declaring it proudly himself and and I just want to say you know See, I get because you're right I, that it's, I, I think, it's Bill Clinton's wife I, I think who's running for president. I think they're both not, deplorable but it's as Maureen Dowd points out you're putting them in the same basket as pointed out as, as time time and again as Maureen Dowd and many others have pointed out Christopher Hitchens uh, while, while he was living Hillary Clinton was a part of enabling her husband so when Hillary Clinton says Oh, we can't have a man like Donald Trump. We can't let a man like Donald Trump be president of the United States. I'm only saying that a lot of people are sounding today about Donald Trump like Republicans sounded in 1992 about Bill Clinton. I, I just want to say, I, I think a key, punishing a woman for her husband's infidelities I'm not. Is, is double jeopardy. I'm not punishing yeah, a no, woman. And you, you, you keep conveniently looking past what Maureen Dowd and Christopher Hitchens and a lot of people have said about Hillary Clinton's role in and, those episodes. And Robert's description of this sort of shell she has and why she has it is because there's a truth in there that I think she should own. And by the way, say, you know what? That Talk to with. Bill Clinton about what he's done because I'm not responsible for that, nor did I love it. In fact, it hurt me deeply. Robert Robert, and talk uh, to Donald Trump about what he's This done. hasn't exactly gone the way we expected it to go. Please jump in. Yeah, sure. No, in fact, Joe, you mentioned 1992 and how uh, the electorate, and in particular more conservative uh, factions of the electorate, perceived Bill Clinton. Uh, the same would be the case with Hillary Clinton. I mean, she wasn't viewed as a vulgarian per se, no. but she was viewed as an arbiter or, or, or an avatar of the counterculture. You know, she was this feminist, uh, you know, Pat Buchanan, you'll recall the 1992 convention had called her a radical feminist who uh, equated marriage to slavery and uh, especially when she had uh, said that she could have stayed home and baked uh, cookies and, and had teas but chose instead to be you know to pursue a high-flying uh, legal career uh, a lot of people objected to that people sent uh, not only uh, uh, not only uh, angry phone calls into the Little Rock headquarters but also uh, 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 freshly baked cookies and once again, the response to that was that uh, uh, Hillary Clinton pulled back. Um, uh, her Hollywood friends uh, helped devise for her a new wardrobe. Uh, she began to um, uh, be in smaller markets and, and all. And so uh, it's, you know, the, the response was as it was before. Uh, her protectors would overprotect, her attackers would overattack, and, uh, and the, the American public would view all of this with a kind of welling distaste for all all parties involved. You know, I need you two guys to jump in here and, and talk about, I mean, maybe you heard it on the campaign trail in 92. I can tell you I heard it wherever I went. Again, I'm, I'm not saying there's a moral equivalency. I'm just not. I think both, <laughs> both activities are deplorable. All I am saying is Definitely. it's fascinating to hear people talk about Donald Trump as if this is the first time yeah. that someone who's perceived as a vulgarian has burst onto the scene when we've talked about Ronald Reagan in 1980. There was a Wall Street Journal editorial about what everybody's saying about Thomas Jefferson and Andrew Jackson back in the 1800s. This has all been said and done before. Perhaps the coarseness is at a level we've never experienced. 
But a lot of the attacks are the same. Well, we, we obviously have more media than we've ever had. I met them both in 1991, and he was open and would tell stories openly about all sorts of things. And she was, from the day I met her, exceedingly guarded. Unlike You're talking about Bill, Bill Clinton yeah. and Hillary, yeah. was open, open sure. and telling stories open. about all. Tor what do you on mean? the level of uh, the kind of stories Trump being was gregarious. telling in that bus? Being gregarious. I'm not saying I'm not saying we're inappropriate, but he would tell he, he would tell you know on. ribald stories, yeah. uh, and 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 was open. But what I'm saying is she was. This goes to Robert's piece. She was out of her experience in Arkansas, as talented as she is, and as much as reporters were interested in her, she yeah. was really guarded. We could, really good. Uh, yeah. I first met Bill and Hillary Clinton on the tarmac of an airport in Texas. I think it was in San Antonio in October of 1972, when they were running Texas McGovern, for yeah. George mm -hmm. McGovern. <laughs> And I have to tell you, Bill Clinton, he was a very good friend of Rick Stearns. They went to Oxford together. Rick Stearns became a federal judge. He was as charming and as open and as gregarious as anyone we've ever met. Flash forward to the mid-80s, late 80s, Jack Germond, one of the greatest political journalists of all time, took me aside one time when we were both at a Clinton event in Arkansas. And he told me, Bill and Hillary, I said, how well do you know them? He said, yeah, no, I know them pretty well. They're both trimmers. He meant trimming the truth. So that's the evolution at that time. And now to today, Joe, the biggest difference, and I understand where you're coming from, and I think I certainly know where you're coming from, the biggest difference between the two people, Bill Clinton as candidate and the way he's lived his life, Donald Trump as a candidate, the way he's lived his life, is Donald Trump's face, name, and voice are articulating what he did. Bill Clinton, you don't have any tape of denied, him. Denied. Well, you denied, have, denied. I, I didn't have sex with that woman. Yeah, but that's not exactly the same as. Well, you, you have know. the Star Report. I'm sorry. What? You have the Star Report, but you don't have Bill Clinton. But, but, but Bill are you, Clinton are you saying is not may, running for president. Wait, are you saying it makes it worse if it's on videotape? Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have Monica and, Lewinsky's and, and deposition. Next yeah. We have Monica Lying Lewinsky's deposition in the Star Report. It's better, is what you're saying, Anand. It is not what I'm saying. Okay. I am saying the candidate is not Bill Clinton this time. Uh, it is Hillary. It is Hillary I agree. Right. right. And Hillary Clinton has suffered the very things we really, are talking about. I right, know, which right is now. why she we, should we step agree. forward and, and say all these men I, need to move aside because they cannot right. think with their brains. Well, that I agree with. Right. And I think one move of the things aside. we watched on Sunday night that I think didn't get as not enough attention is at the very beginning, I would say the first 20 minutes when they were talking about the tape. Um, I felt for the first time that I have watched Hillary Clinton that she kind of fell into herself and had that, was speaking from the gut mm -hmm. about this in a way that she's normally very much in her head. Mm -hmm. And I think if she can summon that, she, it was already lost by the end of the debate, as far as I could tell, but if she could summon that for the next four weeks. She needs to summon it. She seriously does. She needs to finally say, I am tired of taking responsibility for these idiots who cannot use their brains when it really matters, yep. who do things in the White House or Trump Tower or whatever because they can't think with their brains. I can think with my brain and my gut, and I'll run this country like you've never seen before. I'm serious. Like, she's got to just but, shed right, herself but, of but this go guard, point, which protects these men. Go By the way, Joe's she protects point. them right. just as much Dem as anybody Democrat else. Democrat Paul Begala, James Carville, in the 90s said, Bill Clinton's a good man who did a bad thing. Uh huh. You just don't hear a lot of Democrats willing to say that about Donald Trump now. Really? Yeah. Why? What's the difference? Wait, what wait, is wait, the wait, difference? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, wait, wait. Are you. Are because you, he lies? Well, make a hold on. 
So wait, are you saying that Carvel and Begala were just saying the Monica thing, he's a good man who did a bad thing? Yeah, and just as you said before, a lot of women in, uh, during impeachment were uh, willing to say. As if this wasn't a, a long string of, of behaviors by Bill Clinton thing. enabled by Hillary Clinton? Right. Is and that Joe, what they, uh, Joe if I can interject yeah. on this, actually, uh, you know, further to uh, Hillary's performance at the debate, um, I, I I think that she did have an opportunity to address the whole enabling question. I mean, she could well have said, look, you know, uh, this was a traumatic thing for me, played out on an, on an international level, yeah. and I didn't handle it optimally, you know, and, and, uh, and had she said something like that, I think that it could have at least, if not laid to rest, concerns yeah. about uh, uh, her behavior towards these other women, but at least would have been mollifying to uh, a lot of people in the electorate, and I, I think that was a missed opportunity but in what was otherwise a superb debate for Robert, her. but your, your, your story, though, suggests, I mean, your story explains why she didn't yeah. do that. Your story explains why at the beginning of the email uh, crisis. She didn't do that at the United Nations. Why she right. didn't do that? It's just not in her because she's learned to be as protective as possible. She's learned right? not to trust us, basically. I mean, it's every time that she has uh, you know, put herself so out there, uh, you know, she's she's come to uh, feel the animus of the American public. You know, now, that's paranoia. not to excuse Women a lot of her behavior, animus. but that's certainly been part of the dynamic. There is a level of paranoia, and what do they say, Mark Alpern, about paranoia? It's a mistaken belief that people are out to get you. Oh, no, no. Not always mistaken. No, no. no. Paranoia right. in Washington, just right. because you're paranoid doesn't mean that people everybody's not out to get you. Because they are. Anand, <laughs> thank you. Robert Draper. Did, we'll did she pronounce your name right? Story in Hillary Clinton. So you're telling me she knows how to pronounce your name correctly, is but you don't Jared? even know. We have name empathy because yeah, of our last name, name issues. <laughs> All right, it's in the New York Times Thank Magazine, you guys. Robert. Thank you. Thank we'll you, Robert. Thank you, Anna.